Alrighty, well here's what we have with this guitar. And it's a little bit on the crazy side, but uh, the neck is on the right spot for this uh, body. So it's got a good tone to it, right? Those pickups are not uh, shabby at all. I'm not looking inside of it yet. That's what I'm about to do. Take the strings off it and uh, take the neck off and look at it first, see what's going on behind it. Because it's really messed up. That uh, gap is just huge. You know, it's like a half inch gap. <laughs> it doesn't, this neck doesn't even touch the body. And affect the sustain. Okay. But it's all according to what you like and what you expect out of this guitar. And I would expect a lot out because it's a very, very nice looking, very nice guitar. So let's cut away. Let's take the strings off it, look inside of it and uh, see if there's something I can't do about that neck without having to shave it, okay? So hang in there, guys. Okay, we're back at it again. I keep being told, show everything, show everything what you're doing, okay? <laughs> well, I'm just gonna go through and remove the strings. I'll pop them about in the middle, about like here, all right? To remove them. That way I'm not, uh, Let's go through a hell of a lot of trouble to get these things off here, okay? And uh, I'll remove the strings out from the back behind the body when I flip the guitar over, all right? Like so. Give them a nice little shove. I don't know if you can see it or not because I can't see it myself. <laughs> can you see me doing that? There it is. I'm just shoving them through to catch them on the opposite side. There's only five strings on here. The E string broke. What I'm going to do is wind these into a bundle because it never fails. Somebody's over here barefoot in the summertime, even the winter, and they step on these E strings. And there that E string is there to bite them. Ouch. And it does hurt. Okay, now, I'm going to wind those up in a little ball like that and toss these away. That way no one gets hurt, right? And I'll flip this over the other way, remove this uh, tool, put the call on the other side. Set the neck up so I can just take these strings off. All right, oopsies. You can see that or not? Probably not, darn it. Okay, hang in there, guys. We'll flip it around. Okay, now you can see me removing the strings. A little of a mess right now, I'll just get them all out of the way. Back on the sides they belong on. Alright, we start taking them off. Show everything, Dave. Oh my god. I'll show you my booty here soon. Show everything. Anyway, these were wrapped to uh, wind into a little circle after they're finished tuning. Whoops, hit the camera a few times. Let's get these off here. I don't string a guitar up anything fancy. This is pretty much like everybody else does it. And I make sure it had at least two or three wines around it so that, you know, you drop you know, notes, you have alternate tuning. Because when you only wrap it once, you may have to stay out of trouble with that string coming out. Now my hands are getting full. This string out of there and out of the way. Now I'll wind these up temporarily together. Get those last that last one out of there first. 
I want these under control. No one wants an E-string in the foot or the finger or the hand or the buttocks. <laughs> I've never had anybody sit on one, they told me, you know, and stick themselves. That'd be pretty hard to do through pants. But uh, maybe they have, maybe someone has. And just damn things hurt. They're just dangerous. Good. <laughs> and I'm going to start taking the body apart. Get a look at that neck first. And uh, go from there. So hang in there, guys. Okay, now it's time to take the play off the back of this thing. Right, these screws, these screws out. And they're coming out really easy. That's kind of odd. Oh, there's a little squeak. That's a little better. This was a little tougher than the other one. At least got some pressure on it. Let's take a look and see what's going on with this neck. Cause it's just weird. I hope these are long enough too. Let's get one all the way out. My hands in the way. Yes, as usual. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get my hands out of the way. See the length of these. These are like original screws. Now, that one all the way out. I don't use a, a drill to get these in or out because it's just too dangerous to strip in these things. You don't want that to happen. There's a little pop and creak. Whoopsie, sorry, it's a force of habit. I'm trying to you see what I'm doing. Show everything. Well, that means I dropped my pants too. Give you a, a flashy. <laughs> okay, get everything out. Show you everything. You hey guys, if it comes down to it, you don't like this, show me everything. If there's enough of you to say, don't show us everything, which I think there may be. Let me know, put a comment saying we don't need to see every single thing, and I'll, I'll edit those out. It's like I shoot this anyway, okay? Here's a nice little original Squire plate, okay? Now we're going to very gently take this neck out of here. Ah, it's already out. And take a look. See what we've got. Okay, scar anything up here. So we've got totally unlegible. <laughs> I don't know what that says. You know, my glass, I can't read that. And it looks like it was meant for five screws to hold this thing down with, and it just didn't get them. See that? Of course, the whole point is uh, this looks like a real skunk spot. This could be real in here. Nicely made. Nicely made fender, neck, uh, made in Indonesia too, okie dokie, very very nice, fast neck, very smooth, frets are in great shape, fretboard is great, everything's good on this neck so it doesn't fit, and that's where the rub begins, it don't fit the darn pocket. So let's set the neck aside for a while. And get in there and look at that pocket and what you say. Okay. Well. Looks like a pretty standard, uh-oh. Pretty standard cut pocket. Got some kind of gluing in there. Mess. Original screw. Got a compound over. It's not hurt when compound like this, buffing compound. It doesn't hurt when it's on the wood only. It's just when it gets back in electronics, you know, it filters back into those. That becomes a problem. Okie dokie. So, let's set everything aside. Let's open this puppy all the way up. So far, I don't see shims or anything else would cause that neck to rise up like that, and that's a problem. That neck is in a very bad spot. Let's put these away so I don't lose those. Next step, guys, we're going to take off the pit guard. 
Show me everything. I wish I knew how to do it fast forward, like, you know, and have it done. <laughs> I sure would do that, guys. So those guys biting their fingers going, hurry up. I put it on five speed fast forward and get it done. Look like a rabbit on speed. <laughs> Zoom. Now I gotta make sure my hands aren't in the way. Okay, that's coming out nicely. I right, can't see the next one very well. The next oh, ones. Let's move the camera. Show me everything. For those guys that, you know, you've done this a million times, yeah, but there's some guys out there that haven't done this a million times. They never even seen the inside of their guitars, okay? So just bear with me, because I get I get email from all kinds of, you know, positions on these videos saying, you don't show enough. You show too much. You talk too much. You don't play enough to play too much. You don't talk enough. I hate your voice. I love your voice. I want to have your children. Those I like to get. <laughs> as long as I have to donate, <laughs> if I can be there in person, that's no problem. Well, wait a minute, I guess that is. Sugar Richards would have a fit if she knew those were coming in. We don't get very many of those guys. Unfortunately, mainly it's the guys that watch my show, my videos, my channel. Looks pretty standard inside, a little dirty. I have to fix that up. Of course, these get dirty, you yeah. know. Common uh, situation, very common. It looks like a very common setup too. And a couple of wires running back, hot and ground. You've got a uh, fixed, darn it, pickup that won't budge. If I try to move it, it wouldn't go anywhere. <sighs> Damn it, that's an issue. Because I wanted this to go down further, you know. I may have to take a look at that outside the body. I don't want to do it because you have a chance of loosening things up in there. But uh, I'll take a look at get some measurements on that, the height involved. Because we've got to have the fretboard clear the darn pickup height and see what we've got here. Hey, that's not that good. Not that good at all, guys. Clearance 29. Oh, shit. Shit, that's high. That's high. Is that calm down? Oh, that's chips. It looks like that's static in there, but uh, it may not be. It may be some adjustment in there that I'll have to actually go in there and route that out with my router to lower that. Gosh, just a little bit. <laughs> just a few millimeters lower, it'd be fine. So that the, the uh, fretboard, the top of the frets, would clear the pickup. Damn it. Damn it. What happens when you have custom made everything? Things become funky. Monkey, monkey, punky, funky, monkey. I met a punk that was a funky monkey. <laughs> Again, lack of sleep. Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. First of all, this is the screw that holds the plate down. Let's take this out so you can see the electronics in here and let's see what's going on. Now, this got a different screw, so we'll put that somewhere else. And there's one on the opposite side, obviously. Take that one out. You can't see me doing it, but trust me, it's being done. See? And those two in the middle, those hold the three-way switch. So out it comes, and is it tight? Yeah, it's pretty darn tight. You see the inside of this, guys? You got some really cheap electronics in here. Sad to say, it's got a really nice three-way switch. And I'm not kidding, that's a nice one. Alrighty, look at that, that's very well built. 
And then two of the cheapest, smallest potentiometers I've ever seen in a really shitty cap. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Can I fix that up? Yes, that can be fixed up easily. Very easily. Put some nice gear in there. Change that out and about. Okay. Get more power out of those pickups. These are decent looking pickups on these guys. And three ways, as fine as it is, this looks like brand new. It's a good one too. They bought quality there. Thar. Now, the trick is taking off this bridge saddle here. Oh boy, I hate doing this. But I need to get in there and take a look at that. Looking at, kind of looking at, <laughs> the neck project, okay? For a friend of mine that wants to have this uh, neck actually fit in his guitar's body. Only problem is, it's seven uh, sixty fours too deep. This neck's way too deep this way, right? So the fretboard sticks way above the, uh, the playing area where it should be. Got it? And you can't shim that because all it would do is cock the neck and change the notes up and really, really play badly. Even with a uh, bowed neck the other way, it would still be screwed up. So there's not really much more you could do than take the, the uh, you know, take it away, take the parts off the uh, heel itself. Now, I've been talking to uh, some people at Stumac, asking their advice on this. And uh, it comes down to it, they say, well, you know, with the circumstance as you have it, rough grade, remove the uh, wood about halfway down, and sand the rest of it, you know, by hand or with a sander. And uh, that's a good idea, taking a, a, a drill and drilling multiple holes in this down, uh, I only want to come down 564, so two and a half sixty fours down into the wood all over the place like chicken pox and remove what's left of that then sand that down smooth uh, with a sander and with uh, varying grades of sandpaper this thing right. I've been using a uh, little hand sander, a little electric hand sander. Now the big trick to this is getting your vice grip, right, your table vice level. And it's been many, many years since I've actually uh, used this uh, uh, particular vise, or this table vise, uh, to do something that's really uh, ornate or intricate, which is not only intricate, but it's more involved because you have to have a flat plane on that guitar's heel, right, to uh, work properly. So I've got to get a nice flat level here, which is tilted about uh, 10 degrees to the left to right. I change that up with these with these mounting screws down here. Put some uh, shims in there, some washers. Get this first ball level. Then I can actually level against it and level the uh, top of the heel off, so I'll know exactly that I'm uh, cutting the right direction, sanding just enough. And what I end up doing is dropping these rubber grommets, uh, rubber guards down. Uh, 264, 364 is below the top of the guitar's heel, so I have an area to work within. And that uh, the sides of the guitar's body, uh, the side of the neck will be protected and not compressed by the vice's uh, metal teeth. You rubber on them at all times. And as you see it right now, it's just kind of in there haphazardly, but uh, that's how you start. <laughs> Start getting it, start measuring it, start leveling things up, changing things up to make it right, and then uh, do the application. Kind of crazy, but that's the way it works. And right now, I've got it in a uh, call that's holding it up halfway. <laughs> now, I will change that up for a solid piece of uh, wood blocks underneath that uh, that piece of blue plastic there that holds necks up. So, so you know, it'll, it'll balance properly, won't be uh, wobbly at all. But right now, that's where I have it, just to get an idea of where we need to be. And that's about where we need to be. Right about here. <laughs> and of course the things behind it will be moving. The uh, glass cleaners and the alcohol and all the other uh, hand tools and uh, markers. Those will be leaving us. Now I started off to use a few different items. I started to use a little uh, tiny hand plane. And I thought well <laughs> I've got to actually concave or convex this edge to uh, do any work on a flat piece of wood. I want to do the edges with this as it sits. I thought, no, let's try something else. And I thought, well, maybe I'll try some chisels, okay? 
Ah, uh, come on, camera. Try some different size chisels I've got. I've got four different sizes. And so I can't just, you know, scrape a lot of that off there without just, you know, damaging anything. I was like, well, the <laughs> only problem with a chisel is they tend to gouge. And what I'm going for is something that uh, is not a gouge, but I want to just kind of gently remove material. And it's taking a long time to get to this particular part and get this guitar going, but I want to make sure it's done right. And I did ask for a lot of different opinions on this, and I've been, like I said, talking back and forth between uh, you know my shop and Stumac all last two weeks, you know, getting advice from them, and uh, you know different ideas I had about actually doing this. And they had a floating router uh, planer that uh, they have that you put on a, a drill press. But, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, a lot of money invested just to get that done. And they said, you know, this will work. It's going to take longer. And you got to be a little more careful. But again, using that uh, router planer uh, bit that they've got, uh, that very well can just take off a ton of wood before you even knew it. And it's orbital, right? It's rounded. So I still have uh, some edges to do and clean those up as I went and uh, that's sanding again. So the main thing is how to get this thing down to 264 off the top of that heel. Basically, one of, that's the question. We'll be doing this little setup on these uh, uh, instruments here, my little neck support and my uh, table vise, get that back into a level plane. So hang in there guys. Okie dokie, guys. I've got this uh, set up in my vise now. I've leveled my vise uh, to the uh, table, put some shims underneath it to adjust it to make it, uh, you know, level the vise to work with. I've got the uh, guitar in rubber stocks because surrounding the wood parts of it so they don't get marred by the teeth on the vise. And that uh, has to be adjusted uh, carefully because they don't just work perfectly. It's just not. Uh, two perfect flat pieces of rubber that I could find. Anyway, we got it level finally. And it's in there very well. And it needs to come up just a tiny bit on the end of it to get this thing perfectly level again. Okay, just a tiny bit, like, uh, like two or three percent. And then we're set. Not bad, guys. And we're, like I said, we're going to do before, we're going to start off just using a, a, a sander and see how we do with that, a hand sander, an electric hand sander, and go from there. That's our best bet, because I don't want to uh, drill into this even with small pieces. Okay, somebody wants to talk to me. So hang in there, guys. <laughs> Here it comes. Okay, now we got it all adjusted, all set up. We're going to get out the hand sander, clean that up a bit, get the vacuum on it, and plug that in and get at it. Okay, I don't know if you're going to like it too much watching the hand set, sander move around. And my battery's about to go down, so hang in there. Alright, what I'm going to be using is a uh, Ryobi hand uh, a sander, it's a plain sander. Right, for it is in plain, not a belt sander. A belt sander takes it off way too fast. Now I can get down in 5, uh, 16, uh, 564 within a second or two with a belt sander. And this calls for a much more gentle approach to this. Now, what I'll be using is a hard grain grit, okay, with a new uh, sanding plate. And uh, I'm going to take it off just a tiny bit by tiny bit until I get comfortable with it. And then I'll switch to a, uh, um, a uh, hand sanding uh, approach using a uh, lesser and lesser, uh, well, higher and higher uh, level of grit uh, uh, papers, right? So I'll get down to like 800 grit and I'm finishing it up, right? Now it's going to take a lot longer to do this, but from all the information I got from everybody, Stumac, uh, Home, uh, Do It Yourself, I mean, I contacted three to four different well known companies and uh, YouTube uh, people, uh, channels, to see what I should do to get this done. And of course, they all had different opinions. Most of them said, yeah, buy our tools. 
I said, well, you know, guys, do I really need to buy your tools or should I just, you know, very carefully sand this down by hand with a plane sander? And I said, well, you know, if you want to be safe uh, and not take it off, and I'm spending a lot of time doing it, use the hand sander. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't mind spending the time doing this so I can do it right. I don't want this to come off wrong. And the main thing is keeping this level, okay? Now, I've got it tight in the vise right now, not overly tight because I don't want to put any pressure on this fingerboard, okay? I had that to split on me. And it's surrounded by rubber, so it's got a, a, a secondary pressure on it from that rubber from the vise. So it won't mar anything and won't put it too much pressure on the board itself. But when I come to sanding, I'm not going to put a lot of down pressure on it. Okay, I'm just going to pretty much let it rest on there and move it about gently uh, to get that off. Now, like I said, it's going to take a long time to do it, but uh, this is the best way to do this because there's just so much to be concerned about. The hardness of this wood, the fact that it splinters and it cracks, and the fact it's old and dry and you know a dozen other things. And I think if I got in there, even with a tiny drill bit, I stand the risk of splitting things as I continue to connect the holes in it to remove wood so I can go down deeper into the wood and remove it easier. Okay, now, point being, yeah, it's much easier to do it that way, but you stand, you take a bigger risk. And I don't want to risk, so I want this to come out right this guy. He spent a lot of time and effort, well, I spent a lot of time and effort going through this to get it done right, to know how to do it right and do it properly. And he's waited a long time to get his guitar done. So, I wanted to be really pleased with this when it's finished. So, hang in there, guys. I don't think you're going to watch me hand sand for the next two hours. So, once the job's done, I'll show you the, some of the hand sanding to be done. Hang in there. Okay, guys, and we're back again. I wanted to show you a few things before I actually start sanding and, and give you some t uh, tips about doing this. Now, I've got a 90 degree here. It's going to always keep track on a level of this this uh, uh, neck, okay? Once I take it across it, like here, okay? So I'll know that I'm, I'm keeping a level sanding. Can you see that? Okay, you can see that. Right now it's not level, but anyway. Take it across in this direction, and I know I've got a level. One thing came to mind when I was cleaning up my little hand sander, right? That some of you will think about is, guys, this is not just a collection bag okay to fill up with shavings for later use this is an exit bag this is an exit exit port right for your sander this is something you don't want to keep full of of, of, of sandy uh, shavings right or particles you'll overheat your little sander it's an exhaust in other words catch the exhaust junk got me and the guy said well how did yours last you four years and it's still working and mine only last a year and it burned up and I just did this to his, opened up the bag, and it was full. <laughs> Said, well, there's no place to exhaust, right? You got to take that out, sweep it out, suck it out. And I've got my little shop uh, vacuum down here at my side. And just in case any, uh, you know, issues going on. But i got plenty of good circulation here with not only with the, with the uh, doors all open, but also with the fans going on, blowing away any type of sand or dust that accumulates. Okie dokie. So, uh, let's get to it. Hang in there, guys. I've only been at this about uh, 30 minutes. You can see I'm already getting a, a result on this, right? It's already taking it down. And it's doing pretty well, smooth and systematically across the top of this uh, heel here. Now I have to come up in this area as well to make sure I get it down here because I can't leave this, you know, way above so I have to slant it down some until I get even with this. And the hand saying will take care of the rest of it. But uh, that is a true skunk stripe, right? And it's a piece of wood they laid in there in Indonesia. There's the plug for it. And uh, it's working pretty well. It's keeping it nice and level. That's the main thing. So it's going to get a couple of hours of doing this. <laughs> I'll try to get some music on and uh, get at it. So hang in there, guys. Well, look at here. We're getting down to it. That line there is our just below line. We'll go to the line exactly. We'll just barely leave it existing, right? Got a little shave off here on the back side. I knew that would happen. Got to concentrate on this back side a little bit more. And what happens is with power sander, this part here is hard cork or hard wood and it's giving it more resistance. So I don't want to shave it off like this. I want to shave it or 
sand it off just for plastic. I can, okay? Now, look here. Still the same level as this one, right? Same area. So I want to get a nice, flat, even surface, right? Look at that. Just perfectly flat. Get the camera at the right angle. Probably can't. <laughs> Well, oh, darn it. Like this. Nice and flat all the way across. There's no humps, there's no bumps. There's nothing up above. So, and uh, what's holding this up on its end is this little jewel right here. And that's causing problems. I'm not letting it sand down like we should in this particular area. Take a little bit more off, a little more pressure on that. And, and there's hand sanding to do here as well. You get this final bits off. Like I said, I just want to get to that line. Not take it off, just get to it. That way this neck, this fretboard, will be just barely, barely above that pick guard. Don't want to touch it, just barely above it. Nice and flat and even. So, more sanding to do. Hang in there, guys. This will be our first dry fitting with the uh, uh, parts all back on so I can take some measurements and see just how close I am. Now I put it in there and just held it in you know, one piece together and it's really, really close to being finished. Uh, on this side of the guitar, sorry, this side is just a hair's breadth, an RCH above the fret guard, uh, pick guard, I'm sorry, just the RCH above the uh, pick guard. And here on the uh, low side, it's a little bit high, okay, and I want to adjust that, but I want to make sure I don't do any adjustments until I have it screwed tight into the body to make sure there's no issues there, okay? So, what I want to do next is get the parts out, right? And, whoops, <laughs> get the parts out and put them on, okay? And then test the uh, fittings with my gauges, with my gap uh, slides. So, Hang in there, guys. I'll put this thing together. Don't want to bore you to death screwing it up. So, <laughs> screwing them together. Hang in there. Okay, guys. Take a look at this. Here we are with the first dry fitting attempt. Now, look. See that little tiny gap there? Okay? But look at this. Look at the gap on the fretboard above the pick guard. It's perfect. Now, that's a perfect gap. Before this, is like triple this size. It's up here, okay? Very much higher. And the fit board's still perfectly level. You got me? And while I was doing it, I went ahead and cleaned off the uh, frets with some steel wool, get them all nice and shiny and ready to accept uh, some new strings, okay? Now, while I have the uh, strings off, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, oil the fret board again, right? And I'm going to take a look at that gap right here where the heel's not touching the body. That was there before. I thought that uh, that would draw that in some. And uh, I hate to re-screw these or redo these screws by putting in some dowel, cutting dowels and putting them in there and shaving those off and uh, drilling new holes to bring that in. That may crack this, boy, this heel, any drilling, because I really did want to avoid any drilling on this. But there is a gap there, and that's no doubt, right? But uh, let me think about that, get uh, some more uh, input on that. Because I actually contact Stu Mac and a few other dozen companies about what to do about this. And I come out very luckily with a perfectly level uh, fretboard above the pick guard. Not touching, because this thing's got to expand and contract and move and do its thing. But perfectly level above the pick guard. And uh, my uh, uh, square shows it's correct, my level shows it's correct, so I was really lucky to do this by hand, because I really thought I'd come up with something really, really off. <laughs> but you can see that even the, the fret markers are just perfectly in line with one another. Now touching rather than being way above the uh, pick guard, okay? So, uh, let's see what next, guys. This guitar is going to get a complete makeover as far as electronics are concerned. It's going to get a... Uh, uh, tone control put into it. It's going to get new pots put into it, new caps, cap, well actually caps. Uh, there's a small one with the tone control and uh, really make it into one jazzy screaming guitar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so
So everything's going right for a change with this guitar. Like I said, let me check that gap out, and make sure I don't have an issue there. Uh, I'd rather see it touching, but then again, I gotta maintain a space between the uh, fretboard and the pickup. That's got that's the definite space that must be maintained. I can't just uh, arbitrarily just shove that board uh, towards that pickup because that may cause even further issues. You follow me? All right, guys. Well, uh, I checked the gap on this. This gap between the uh, board. The neck and the uh, body of the guitar and uh, the distance between uh, this pickup to the board right has always been too small of a distance between the two so that means the scale is going to be a little bit off now there's nothing i can do about that unless i add parts to the board and bring it back and put new uh, screws in it but i'm not going to do that that's getting way beyond what we discussed doing on this guitar uh damn it Yes, we're looking at, uh, this should, this should be one half of an inch between this edge and this edge here, and it's not. It's much less. We're not, we're not talking about a half inch less, it's just less. And, uh, that may be adjusted later on, but that's what happens when you try to make a neck fit a body that's not meant to fit. And that's what's going on here. But, I did manage to make this thing perfectly level, and, uh, 564 lower into the pocket, which means that uh, instead of being 1064, the strings being above, right, the uh, fretboard, 1064, so that's as low as they could go. Now we get down to 564, 364, back where it belongs for the uh, uh, action on this guitar. So, like I said, the next thing to do is turn this thing around, get it on my table, and start changing these electronics out to some really jazzed up gear. Okay, and I'll show you that as we do it. So, hang in there, guys. Okay, it's time to switch out the electronics on this guitar and put some uh, a TBX tone control in here, give it more jazz, more juice, more oomph, as well as put a uh, orange drop cap in there. So we'll get that all straightened out. Now remember, keep my hands out of the way. <laughs> now on these, main thing you do is just use nice soft tools or tools with no really edge to them so you don't have a uh, scratch on the plate right so you don't want all scratched up and we're looking at a typical inside of a uh, fender setup right it's up some you've got uh, two potentiometers very small ones i believe they're 500 k's i can't really read that they may be 250s but we'll go with the 500s make this really juiced up nice new three-way switch all set up and of course the next thing you do is just get a nice uh, tool with a soft edge to it to remove those nuts okay and why don't we do it just use this I mean these work just fine all you gotta do is give them a little quick twist it's loose and off they come now I can't help but get my hands in the way from some of these guys now remove this plate, get it out of our way. Trace down the wires of the two pickups. Separate them from the rest. Just one little quick twist and it comes off. Now, <clears throat> ah, this one still has a washer with it, so does this one. It does it. Now it's a washer. Okay, let's get this thing off here in the safety catch then we'll get this off you see me we'll get the uh, three-way switch undone remember guys uh, a, lot of, a lot of people that watch my channel they say I want to see everything show us everything so I'm trying to show you everything and a lot of times it's not easy and a lot of times it's boring but if it gets down to it guys and a lot of, enough of you say hey we don't want to see every darn little thing let me know, because if enough of you do, you know, make comments and say, we, we've seen it too much, <laughs> it's too boring. And the big thing is I'm right-handed. If you're seeing too much, guys, let me know and I'll stop uh, shooting all these little fine details. But a lot of you are saying you want to see every bit of it, like some of my counterparts to do the same type of work on YouTube. 
Say, well, I want to see what you do with that. I want to see how it's done. All right. Now, I can't imagine somebody wanting to see, you know, strings being strung up, but some people do. Some noobs don't know how and think there's a trick to it. Well, there's not really. It's just uh, stringing it up. Of course, there's different ways to string up a guitar, but uh, I just use a common method. Now, get these all these parts out, set that aside. These all go into a little magnetic dish that I keep for everyone's parts, right? So when I'm working on your guitar, all your parts go in here, right? All alone, okay? So they don't get lost, misplaced, or mis, uh, misused on somebody else's guitar. <laughs> now, let's see what we got inside here. Okie dokie. Aha! We got some counter washers to help with the length of that uh, tensiometer. So it's too long. You know, those in there? Nope, that was it. Okay, now it's like, see if I can get you inside this thing. Okay. So, what you see a couple of wires coming from the uh, pickups and a couple of wires that should be showing a ground wire in there to the bridge. I believe the bridge is just a plate bri uh, wire that just touches this particular plate. It doesn't do anything else. It doesn't wrap around anything. But uh, we'll make sure we have good wires in there. And uh, these aren't bad gauges, but I, I use a little, well, that's about the gauge I use, 22 gauge. And the pickups look about the same. These are a little bit better than most, right? But what we'll do, we'll go in there and desolder all these parts. And we'll keep those parts for the owner to have. Just give them back to them. This is the only thing we're going to keep in there is a good three-way switch. And it works perfectly well. It's nice and crisp. And the way to tell it, <coughs> it's got a good three-way. Basically, there's nothing, you know, broken on it. Hear that clicking? And you feel it, too. Nice, solid contact. That's a good three-way switch. Nothing wrong with that. So, what we're going to do next is set up the soldering iron and get these uh, parts off here get these wires to the pickups uh, uh, loose and free, ready to use, and uh, go from there. So hang in there, guys. Okay, guys, everything's uh, <clears throat> been undone except for the uh, three-way, which I'll leave that as it is. No sense in just rewiring that again, uh, same setup. But uh, anyway, what we'll be using, right, good old Gibson uh, pots, right, and of course, uh, where did I set that little devil? The uh, little tongue control, all right? Nice little setup, okay. It comes with his own new knob, which we won't be using. It's gonna have silver ones. But uh, that's what it looks like, okay? It's got a push, pull to uh, really jazz up that uh, treble. Really just change that tone up and make it scream. So pretty cool little device, not much money involved, but you know, 40, 50 bucks, and you got one hell of a little guitar. Especially for one like this one. <laughs> so, we're going to uh, get all the schematics out for how this thing is wired up and set it up accordingly and in conjunction with the pickups that are currently being used to make that, uh, I hope that makes some sense to you guys. But uh, we got to make sure that we have this thing set up properly so that. Uh, we have no further problems, especially with this, this three-way switch. It's a little bit uh, different than just a uh, common switch, right? With all these leads on it. So get that set up along with a little junction box, a little junction wire there. Anyway, we'll get that all set up and uh, soldered in there. I don't think you're going to be able to see anything when I solder anyway. My hands are always going to be in the way, so hang in there, guys. Well, the issue came up. If you look at this. This is that braided wire coming off the pickup, and it's been uh, crimped. That could be an issue. That could uh, cause a problem in the future. What I'll do is I just wrap it with some electrical tape, make sure it's uh, at least somewhat protected beyond this. But I uh, hope there's not a short in this thing. Come by later. And uh, one thing you need to do when you're putting these on, make sure you get them to point towards each other, right? But uh, you also want to make sure that you level them out at the same height. <laughs> and uh, it may take a few measurements or a, a, a you know a leveler, right? Make sure they're the same height, but make sure they're the same height just makes it nicer and it looks more professional. And like I said, make sure they're pointing towards each other to uh, make it there proper. Oh yeah, and make sure to use um, you know 
lock washers on both sides. Keep these things from moving around a bunch. Got it? All right, so back to the soldering and getting these parts together via, via, via the uh, diagram that came from uh, the uh, tone control. Hang in there, guys. Okay, well, we're at the part where we're doing some soldering now, and uh, one thing became quite evident is that the uh, output jack or the jack for this uh, guitar is really a crummy one. <laughs> Not very well made. Now, it probably came with the uh, unit itself, with this uh, piece here, the end piece. And uh, basically, I just went with a better one. You know, I don't think he'll be happy if this thing crapped out on him, especially now I'm doing all these changes. And it's not very expensive. It's only like $10, $12 to replace these things. And it's a much, much better jack. So it'll last him a lot longer. So that's about it for now. So hang in there, guys. Go ahead. All right, uh, my name is Randy. I brought this uh, little weird custom guitar over to Dave here to get it worked on. Had a lot of problems. Um, action was way, way too high. Um, turns out the input jack didn't work. Electronics weren't very good, but he, uh, he did a real good job getting this thing fixed up. Thanks. Main thing is, get this. See what's next door on the stand next? Since I put this on Facebook, that dropped yours uh, 5 16 mm -hmm. This is, I'm sorry. 564. This is 964 off. This one is. Yeah. So now they're bringing these things to shape. Oh yeah, uh, you're gonna be the man for that. Yeah, that's a, that is a pro pro job on that. I mean, that looks. It came accurate. out right. That looks great. Yeah. yeah. I would have just given up if I was trying to do it. Give a couple of tweaks, twangs. Yeah, turn that baby up. Not very good at playing, but. Dude, it don't matter. Just you know, play if you want. You know, fun. Oh yeah, jazz. Yeah, that sounds great, great. Work your pickups, dude. I got neck right now. Yeah. Got some bow. Wow. That's strong. Got some twang to it. Got some bridge actually going. Yeah, it's yeah, great, great. Great sound guitar. Yeah, it does now. It's got the lot. Roll that over on, you know, your tone thing. Uh, what it does, and it makes it. That's your volume. Anyway, the, the, when you roll it over and feel it go up and over, you know, like a hump. What that's yeah. doing is giving you an extra twang boost that you won't lose at low volume. Oh yeah, you can definitely hear that. Too. Man, it's, it'll yes, scream for you. Now. All the way down. Uh, oh, here it goes right all slow there. metal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's I love that. <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah, that's what my telly's got on. I love that little tweak, you know? That is, yeah. I mean, that action, that is probably like half of what it was when I brought this Oh, yeah. Too. Everything's set up just exactly as you wanted. Yeah, that's You a, know, you, you know. wanted a medium low action. You got a nice uh, 12 uh, curvature to it on the, uh, on the radius. Mm -hmm. Your neck set up with some relief to it. Your neck set to, you know, Drop that 564 off the height of it because of the pocket. Okay. Now, something that will never ever work properly is to try to get that guitar's neck to fit plumb against the body right, because right. they'll change the scale up yeah, and they'll yeah. be out of scale. So it's left best left as it is where it is. And this is honestly lower than most of my guitars. So you did a you did a really great job. Well, on you that. got another preset coming on the next one you bring over, Duke. Right. So I need the film. Oh, yeah, I've, got, I've got guitar. I mean, this was a really cheap guitar. Uh, Not anymore. <laughs> it was, but yeah, I have guitars that cost quite a bit more than this that, yeah. that aren't set up as well as this at all. Well, you got your nice little bonus yeah. knobs you threw in. Yeah. Those look, look great. Those are nice looking, huh? Yeah, it's a yeah. funky, cool little guitar now. No, make sure to put those trees on there. It'll play much better oh, with definitely. trees. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? And you said you want to do it yourself, so I said, nah, I'll let do it yourself. You know, yeah, just, I can, yeah, I'm comfortable doing stuff like that, but I, uh, I'll leave all this kind of stuff to you. You're cool. The, you're the expert on this. Cool. Bring yeah, the next awesome. one over, dude. We're ready because yeah, I need I'll the be, film. Yeah, I'll spread the word to you. I've got friends cool, that uh, cool. can bring stuff over to you. And actually, I've got some amp stuff I can bring you to. What's wrong with your amp? It's nothing big, but um, the uh, little Blues Junior that I have, yeah. the reverb tank just keeps... Crap just out. cutting out, yeah. It'll just okay. I'll fix it. And I tried. Uh, I don't know if the connections on the tank are bad, but uh, 
yeah, it'll play fine for a while and then just completely cut out. Uh, and it feels, uh, you know, you can feel the cables in the back. Get hot? Not hot, just it feels like the the connection on the box is kind of like like it's just not a tight fit with the, the cables. Okay. They, from the okay. factory. But the box, it's, yeah, because I was swapping out a speaker and so, I, you know, looked at the tank and everything uh -huh. and it's just the, the two cables that go in. Yeah. But like I said, about a year ago, it just cut out and I, I thought it was just totally broken and then just started working again for a while. Lost solder's got a short in it. The main thing is don't play it, mm -hmm. stop you doing it, messing with it, bring it over because you'll burn this thing up. I've okay. seen that happen. Yeah. You're describing the same scenario, one yeah. that burns. Once they're burned, forget it. It's not worth the money to fix right. it. Right. Yeah, I think what I'll do, um, so I'm going to get new tubes for it anyway. Yeah. Probably buy some better tubes. Well, bring it over. You know, yeah. I, the parts, you know, dude, I don't charge any extra for the parts, except oh, for yeah. mail. If I have to pay for the mail them. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the postage, obviously, got to pay you that. Yeah. But if this costs 20 bucks for a tube, you'd pay 20 bucks. Yeah. I don't charge extra for the parts. No, cool. ever. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. We um, had a friend that was selling a, uh, I think it was a Patriot speaker that I put in there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I'd like to. What what uh, what what models Patriot? Um, you remember? Quick. I think it's it's not Eminence. It was another one of the big companies. Let me see. I still end up, I mean, I don't play that amp a whole lot anymore since uh -huh. I got that supersonic, but I, still, I like how small it is. Well, it's a good thing you don't, because you end up burning it up. Yeah, anytime you got something that cuts in and out, that's a short, and that can lead to all kinds of trouble. Let's see here. And it could be also a short and a ground issue, which you could actually just sh yeah. zap the shit out of you with yeah. a tube amp. You gotta be careful with a tube amp, dude. <clears throat> yeah, it always hurt. I had a <clears throat> real, real tiny amp that I swapped the tubes, out, here. tubes out for. Uh -huh. And that's the first thing everybody said was you got to make sure all that stuff's completely drained or you're going to zap the shit out of yourself. Yeah, you don't, uh, you don't de uh, uh, power the capacitors. You're just, you're asking for it. I know I took a picture of that guy. You know what I'm saying? Do you know how to, to, to leak a, a capacitor, get it to leak its voltage? Mm -hmm. Then just don't. Yeah, just don't mess with Don't it. try it, no. Just don't try it because you'll get hurt. You know, my friends go, well, you know, I hate asking you to do my stuff for me. I don't mind doing this stuff. Right. You know, shit. It helps from the, it's video for me. Because I don't make any profit on this stuff. Right, yeah, it's just like kind of a fun hobby. But if you can make money out, then that's even better. Well, not until I'm finished videoing. You know, I always give people half price on the regular rates. Yeah. You know. And if they, of course, they, some refuse to let me video it. I'll charge them I don't full. Mind. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I suck playing. I really don't like playing in front of people. But oh man, everybody does the same thing. You did a oh, couple man. of things, they quit. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, I really don't like doing this in front of people. You're coming to the party, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah.